Fear is a funny thing. Since the dawn of time, men, women, and children have been afraid of clowns. But ask any parent what the scariest thing in the world is, and they'll all tell you the same thing. An angry toddler with a knife. But what would happen if you combined the power of a clown with the lunacy of an enraged, weapon-wielding toddler? Can you beat Fallout 3 as the pint-sized slasher? Back in April, Mitten Squad turned 9 years old. But here's the thing. I made Mitten Squad when I was 16, and on May 15th, I turned 26. And you know what that means. We can officially celebrate 10 years of Mitten Squad on a technicality. And what better way to do that than with the release of the Fork Barbarian's cooler older brother, the Nuclear Fork Barbarian made by Makeshift. The plush is on sale now for $27.99. This is a limited run product that will only be on sale until July 1st. If you don't buy one by then, it's gone forever. For starters, the pint-sized slasher is a character that exists within Fallout 3 within the Tranquility Lane questline. You become him to complete the questline for Betty White to escape the simulation without taking any pills. Unfortunately, as we've seen before, it is simply impossible to beat Fallout 3 as an actual child. Assuming you somehow managed to make it this far, when you reach President Eden to take the vial, you're told you cannot use that. Children cannot carry viruses, we know this. And of course, escaping the vault as a 16-year-old would result in the so-called pint-sized slasher going to a pint-sized prison cell for the rest of his natural life. So where does that leave us? You guessed it, it's baby time. First things first, the pint-sized slasher's blade is only available in the Tranquility Lane questline. And because I don't feel like giving a toddler the tool of a metaphorical god, we're gonna be going with the safety scissor route. It would be unsafe to give a toddler a real knife, so we'll be going after the toy knife. That tool, despite its name, is still a melee weapon, so special stats are all based around the melee weapon skill. Strength for the melee weapon skill itself, intelligence for some skill points when leveling up, and luck to boost all skills. Now, it's time to leave daddy encased in dust just like the 80-year-old woman superhero the octopus who, like when an octopus is startled, spits dust out of her <laughs> walk into a wall, quick save, quick load, and rapid succession, and with enough gusto in your heart, you can clip through the wall and fall into a part of the vault you shouldn't be able to reach. From there, as we've done so many times before, it's as simple as escaping the vault as a baby while dealing with a few roaches looking for an easy meal. Make sure to grab the supplies like the stim packs and, I guess, that's it. We can't use the nerf bat and babies can't have guns. Overseer isn't around, so you snag his key from his locker, enter the escape tunnel, and seeing as we never took a ride on the goat, it's here, at the beginning of the end of the line, where we picked tag skills. I went with melee weapons, medicine, and lockpick. Out into the real game, I made a straight line for Megaton so I could speak to Lucas Sims and gain access to my Pip-Boy, and, as expected, it's pretty much inside my skull. Here I made the first executive decision of this video. Pint Size Slasher is a fully grown child, roughly the age of 9. It's fair to increase my height just enough to be able to use my Pip-Boy. Without doing this, we wouldn't be able to equip the toy knife or the clown mask. We're getting that too, and the challenge would be for naught. Now that we've got some measure of control and can heal and jump, crouch, and cry out dada every time the E key is pressed, trust me, that didn't get annoying immediately, where are we going? We're going to the far off land of Point Lookout. That's the only place where we can find both the toy knife and the mask. Getting there, what an ordeal. The quest say to investigate the riverboat. Only problem is, it's pretty damn close to Rivet City. Now, in another life, I'd have thought this through and taken the safe passage by you know whose hut, past the Jefferson Memorial, and then swam across the sea to the riverboat. Sadly, that didn't happen. I did attempt to help this guy who was rigged to explode, operative word there being attempt. As a punishment, I suffered the eternal flame, and beat it with the help of a mole rat who, like the roaches, had an affinity for fannies. Farther southeast, a triplet of feral ghouls ripped and teared at the little flesh I had to my name. For a moment in time, I'd hoped that this roaming eyebot would laser them all to death while I dealt with this giant pile of rubble blocking my path. See, I'd taken a wrong turn a ways back and gotten attacked by mutated mountain people. Unfortunately, that path led me astray. I used time travel to revert to a prior save to take a different route. A big kid ran up to a four-year-old, presumably looking for help with his ant infestation. I've heard from unreliable sources that Aunt Fanny is in fact not a nice woman. Seeing that I couldn't be of assistance, he kindly f***ed off, letting me get back to the business of being harassed by adults trying to force-feed me lead. 
Thankfully, I stocked up on both Stimpax and Ipecac, so my stomach and overall body both survived that momentary ordeal. After coming across a traveling merchant, I sold what I could and continued on my way, hoping they'd handle the bad men for me. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Who gives a shit? I got to use the destroyed and possibly irradiated cars like a jungle gym. It's always fun to play. A guy tried to EMP me outside the Arlington Library, but as I am not a synth, it didn't really bother me. If anything, it's my brother who's the synth. I was here first, and I'm far more charismatic and attractive if you can believe that, though he does have more hair than me. My last roadblock on the way to the boat was Mr. Missile and his favorite long-ranged catapult. He got me once, couldn't hit a little target more than that if he tried, and I realized I needed money to ride the ferry, and worse than that, the riffraff had to be cleared out of the local area before de-docking could commence. I could be of no assistance. Logically, as I was a toddler, I went for a swim out to that there destroyed boat I'd never seen before to one, loot the bitch for weapons, ammo, and medical supplies, and two, watch as Tobar and his slut and a robot fended off the intruders. Suffice it to say, with a brief summation of what happened, they couldn't handle it. So, time travel again. This time, though, I went straight to Rivet City from the riverboat dock, which I could see from the distance. Met Shrapnel and Frank, stole all their guns and ammo for caps, sold it to a vendor who would accept it, made my way back, and bought a ticket to ride. And with that, we have arrived at Point Lookout. There's a green fog infesting the lower atmosphere, a lighthouse to guide the ships to the rocky shores like a f***ed up towering mermaid, and even a ferris wheel that doesn't work anymore. This is my kind of place. We have two goals here in Greenland. Goal 1, find the spooky pint-sized slasher mask, and 2, find the toy knife. One came easier than the other. The voodoo mask is tucked away in room 1K of the Homestead Motel, the key to which, provided you don't get torn to shreds by wild four-legged mongrels on the way there, is on the desk in the lobby. Snag the key, enter the room full of decorative art pieces, and you've got yourself one pint-sized slasher mask. As for the toy knife, that little delicacy is just south of the Turtle Dove Detention Center. It's an almost friendly-sounding name for a very unfriendly place. After being nearly spotted by one of the many roaming swamp folk, I used my sole stealth boy to creep through the blades of grass undetected. Unexpectedly, there were Mr. Handys armed with plasma toys alongside turrets and aforementioned swamp folk waiting for any would-be intruder at the detention center. I, momentarily unaware that the toy knife was not inside, checked the cellar for my dull blade. I didn't find it, though I did find a solid supply of chems and medical supplies. The knife itself is located directly left of a yellow sign just south of the center. But there are more than one yellow signs and all the big bad meanies make it difficult to find the little wooden box housing my Fisher Price knife. It took a good bit of effort to find it. For a second, I thought this nearly brain dead brawler might have had it. I couldn't be sure if his strength would overcome the laughable damage this knife does, but I had no way to find out. As all great heroes do, in their moment of panic, I resorted to YouTube to find exactly where the knife is. Should you be able to clear out the area using weapons of mass destruction, finding previously mentioned knife would be a slice of dully cut cake. For me, even with the video assistance, it was not. Then, in my first of many all is lost moments, I struck fool's gold and found the toy knife sitting neatly inside a little box. The condition isn't great and the damage it does decreases, as all weapon damage does as the condition goes down. As far as melee weapons go, the toy knife is just the worst, in terms of both raw damage output per attack, as well as overall damage per second. It does a pathetic one damage per attack. For comparison, the rolling pin does three times as much damage. It also only does three damage per second. For some perspective, a Swamp Folk Swamper, one of the weaker of the bunch, has 150 hit points. But here's the kicker, the toy knife is just that, a toy. It's not built to last. A regular knife can attack roughly 500 times at full condition before breaking. The toy knife? You should just take your socks off now before I tell you. It can only attack about 185 times before breaking at 100% condition. Shit sucks. And if you recall, damage output is directly tied to the size of your character, so theoretically, I could be looking at less than one damage per attack. And with maybe 20% weapon condition, I'm looking at less than 50 total damage I can deal before this thing breaks. Attacking anything here is not an option, though I did do it to a trio of inbreds before escaping into the drink and fast traveling back to the boat where, guess what, I need another ticket to ride back and I've got zilch for money. Almost out of options, I traveled to the Colbert Mansion to see what he has to report. Also, I broke my knife trying to kill a mole rat. That's where we're at at the moment. The good news is that there's tons of free weapons, ammo, medical supplies, and lootable objects lying around in the Colbert Mansion. I took everything I could get my tiny hands on. 
assault rifles, tribal armor, missile, mini guns, grenades, mines, and anything else you can think of. The little boy could carry 250 pounds of supplies, but he was sitting pretty at over 400 pounds. That's how you know he's an American. Chock full of supplies, I bid Desmond a fond f**k off and headed back to the riverboat on foot, slowly, unable to jump. I'm effectively crawling. Daddy would be proud of his boy, but terrified at the situation he's gotten himself into. The one lone swamper was waiting for me outside the mansion door, and I was sure, with the medics and stim packs I had, I could survive the journey. But when his cousin slash husband showed up with a rifle, I had this sick feeling in my stomach that I wouldn't survive the journey. And right I was. I made it with an eyeshot of the boat before succumbing to death once again. Knowing I wouldn't be able to take a different route, I went back to the mansion and dropped some stuff off, repaired some other stuff, until my carry weight was just below the legal limit, and once more, set off for Bodie McBoatface. This time was exponentially different. Rather than draining all the healing supplies I could fit in my pull-ups, I used maybe three stim packs getting to the boat. There, I sold what was required to purchase a ticket back home and traveled back to the capital wasteland to begin the real game. First thing I had to do back in the land of pretty colors was get my knife repaired by the local gunsmith. From there, well, we've been here before. I set my mighty eyes on the west side of the map, an undisclosed location we'll disclose later, once you've earned it. Got a bug to death though. That poor soul is gonna get made fun of for eternity in the fiery beehive down below. The puppy put up a bit more of a fight. It was less cutting and more of a beating. Took a few swings at a Mr. Gutsy before realizing that was a losing endeavor on my part. You see, killing most things is simply out of the question. That mechanical thing's got 350 health. Ain't no chance in hell I could take that metal monster down. Slowly, very slowly, but equally as surely, I traversed the landscape laid out by God before me, barely able to see over the few blades of grass poking out from the earth. Then, I found my Goliath, a big orange creature capable of tearing my entire head off with a bullet if he was able to land a shot on my dome, which of course, he lacked the mental capacity to do. Before long, I found it, the entrance to Little Lamplight. That's absolutely correct, class. I, like my fourth grade teacher, have acted like a vile venereal disease with legs. I blanked on Tranquility Lane in spite of that being where this entire idea came from. It was less out of not wanting to do it and more out of wanting this challenge to be over. This weapon sucks. Even as a full-fledged adult, which I am allegedly, this would be a struggle. Maybe if I used the scrap metal exploit for infinite XP and I maxed out all relevant skills, it could be done. But then the enemies would be a higher level too. I made one last trip to get my toy fixed and bought a few stim packs for the road. Initially, I did the exploit to clip inside Lamplight's interior. But once I got to Murder Pass, I remembered that when you do it this way, you can't equip weapons or use your Pip-Boy. I had to chug some vodka and sweet talk McCready into letting me inside. Only then could I pull out my toy knife inside Murder Pass. I pulled it out, but as I've already implied, using it would be like sending a water balloon into the sun. There's no point. The base Super Mutant has 100 health. My knife's only got about 60% health, therefore I could kill maybe two but then I'd still have to escape from the Enclave base, which would require some attacking. Perhaps using the toy knife as an actual overgrown baby wasn't my best idea, but then again, when have I ever had any good ideas outside of playing Fallout 3 with my eyes and playing every Wii Sport at the same time? As I've mentioned in other videos, the only upside to being tiny is ranged attackers, even when attacking at close range, have a hard time hitting you. Vodka just wore off, here comes the pain. At the risk of reopening old wounds, you've seen me do this many, well several times at least. Murder Pass as a borderline infant is no picnic, but it's no conscious baby surgery either. Just gotta pick your movements, avoid gunfire like only a baby can, close the doors to lock the big orange men out of your house home alone style. I think I haven't seen that particular movie. I was a homeward bound kid. Rest in peace, sassy. Most of the mutants will follow you into the test labs if given the chance. To avoid that, as soon as you enter the chambers, you must repeatedly quick save and quick load. For some reason, that throws them off their game. All but the one with higher brain function. That guy's in double digit IQ territory. Proud of you, kid. Then, quickly run to activate the fire alarm. Hide in Fox's room while he clears out the Neanderthals and malfunctioning Neanderthals with tentacles. Wait for him to get the geck for you, and it's not rewind time. It's child abduction time. They say it will most likely be a family member, and that seems to be the case here. Autumn tricked me. 
he got me good. Using the few level ups I had from reaching this point in the game, I raised my melee weapon skill up into the 80s. Medicine got a good ways up there as well. Used my vast strength to convince the officer to get off my back and let me be, and quickly made it to the secondary section of Red Rock Bunker, where Autumn overruled the president's orders and commanded all forces to attack a good little Christian boy. The one good thing the toy knife's got going for it is it costs very few action points to use in bats. Problem is, you have to actually land an attack to do damage, something I sometimes lacked the arm length to do. Nevertheless, I killed this scientist to assert my dominance and let the soldiers know what I'm capable of when I'm fighting against people not in high-tech powered armor who also won't fight back. Given the right set of circumstances, I'm a human wrecking ball. In spite of what I said earlier about needing to save my knife for the Enclave, there was really no point. The Fallout Wiki, known for being absolute in its factuality and not incorrect in any margin, didn't say how much health the standard Enclave power armor soldier had. But given the 40 damage resistance provided by the armor, I can only assume the number of soldiers I'd be able to successfully take out before my knife broke could be counted with your thumbs. In an unusual twist, the sentry bots fought their way up to the giant metal door leading outside. Usually, I've got to take out at least the two soldiers, including one with a missile launcher. Not so this time. Robots know to help out children in their hour of need. Outside, Fox and my old buddy Sticky came to my rescue. That's right, I told Sticky I'd take him to Big Town. He was foolish to trust me. Fox would have been too if he'd actually trusted me. He's got his own adventures to go on. I think you know what happens now. We can't get into the Citadel without clipping around the outside of the building, and even then, the final cutscene inside with Lion Squad and the Old King Cat won't trigger. That leaves one option. Fast travel to the riverboat landing, swim across the sea, and enter the memorial via the tunnel. Or not, just an idea. No, we walk to the edge of the bridge and clip around the single barricade the Enclave has set up. At least, that would be what we'd do if I had the hops to make it over the ledge. Instead, I had to waddle all the way back across the bridge, quick save, quick load through this gap, take another dip in the drink, casually clip over this ledge, and enter the Jefferson Memorial for the final confrontation. I'd brought Sticky along for a very specific reason. This place is still swarming with Enclave soldiers, and I was more than willing to sacrifice his life as a distraction to let me get inside the rotunda, where one final trick has to be performed. Getting into the right position to cheat like a whore mother takes some fine finger work, but inside the purifier I got. Last stop, Autumn, must be both spoken to and knocked unconscious before the purifier can be activated. I laid into his waist, thighs and knees with my knife like there was no tomorrow, because for one of us, there won't be. Then, with a single sliver of health left, my favorite toy and most prized possession broke. Round two it is. This time around, I made use of as many Vats attacks as I could, with help from a couple doses of Jet, to restore action points. I did this primarily because critical shots do several more damage points, and every single point counts. At the end of the day, I knocked the f***er out, approached the terminal, and couldn't hit the buttons to enter the code. I even slowed the game down a bit just to ensure it wasn't a me thing. I wouldn't have done it this way, I just needed to know if it could be done, which it couldn't. No matter, when the going gets tough, and the tough have broken legs, they resort to cheating one last time. I ran around to the back of the machine and clipped myself through the gap, jumping, leaping, and praying all the way until I managed to get myself atop the terminal where I entered the code, 216, collapsed onto the keys like only a very small individual could, my skull took some damage but that's okay, it's soft, it'll recover, and I beat Fallout 3 as the pint-sized slasher. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything, leave a dislike. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters, as well as other channel members, for making videos like this one possible. You can join the Mitten Squad Discord server by going to mitten.land. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.